Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem max points on a line. The prompt is pretty simple. We're given an array of points that exist on some two dimensional grid with an X axis and a Y axis. And we wanna return the maximum number of points that lie on the same straight line. So in this case, we're just given three points and all of them happen to lie on the straight line. Now, the first observation that you need to make is how do you know if points are on the same line? Visually, you can kind of tell we need the slope to determine that. We know that these two points are, well, pretty much any two points that we're given are gonna be on the same line. Like no matter where they're located, we can connect them via a straight line. But when we introduce a third point, we have to make sure that it intersects this line. How do we know that? Well, it has to be on the same slope as these points. And I personally think that leak code solution kind of overcomplicates this problem. So I'll be giving my own variation, which I think is slightly more simple, but that's kind of the main idea here. The slope is what matters here. Now, even after realizing this, we can come up with two solutions. One is going to be the slightly less optimal solution. It's going to be n cubed, but we can make a simple observation which can get this to be more efficient, which will be n squared. Let me show you how. So the most brute force solution would be to go with every single possible pair of points because we know a pair of points is going to give us a slope and then we have a slope. So then what we do is go to every other point in the grid. In this case, there's only one, but you know, there could have been a bunch of other points. And we go through every single one of these points and we would then calculate the slope with this point. How would we do that? Well, first we'd have to calculate it with this one, and then we'd also have to calculate it with that one. And if the slope was the same, then we would say, okay, this point also lies along the same line. In this case, it does not though, uh, but this point would, because this point, uh, using this point has the same slope, and then using this point also has the same slope, so therefore it lies on the same line. Now, the problem with this approach is, first of all, we're going through every pair of points. We're going to have one outer loop, like a for loop that goes through every single point. Then uh, for every n of the points, let's assume that there's n of them. And then we'll have another inner loop, which will give us uh, go through every other point. And this will give us the pair of points here. And then we'll have a third loop that goes through all the rest of the points. So this is going to be n cubed. Basically, we can fix this by using a hash map and Instead, what we're gonna do, conceptually at least, is say that we're going through every single point on the grid and we're considering, is this the point that happens to lie on the longest line? Is this the one? That's the question we're asking. How do we determine that? Well, for this point, we go through every other point and calculate the slope. And using that slope, we're going to count how many points have the same slope. Running through it quickly on this example is gonna be simple because what we're gonna find is that, uh, let's say this is our first point, and then we go through every other point. Let's say this one first, we see that the slope between these points is equal to one. So we say that for all points with a slope of one, we have two points that uh, do that. Then we're gonna go to this third point and we're gonna see what's the slope between these two points. It's also one. So then we say we have three points that have a slope of one. Now let's say we had another point over here, over at y equals five. We'd see what's the slope between these points. Well, it's two. So we'd say we have two points. For a slope of two, we have two points that lie on that line. Now you tell me which one of these is the maximum, three. So in that case, we would return three. But actually in this case, we haven't finished the algorithm because all we asked so far is what's the longest line we can create with this point. We also have to ask that same question for this point and this point and this point. Two quick things that I haven't covered yet is how do we actually calculate the slope? I'll show that in the coding section, but it's pretty basic algebra. You might've forgotten it, but that's probably not the most complicated thing about this problem. The last thing is when we do calculate the slope, what about when we do it with points that are vertical like these two, because we're gonna get a denominator of zero because the way we uh, calculate the slope is we take y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 and since these two points have the same x value we're going to have a denominator of zero that's going to give us a problem so for the slope in that case i'm just going to use the value 
infinity. So that's how we'll know which points lie on the same vertical line. So now let's code it up. I left a few comments here just to kind of give a summary of what we're gonna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is initialize the result to equal one because we're guaranteed that we're given at least one point. And then we're gonna go ahead and start iterating through every single point. So we're gonna go through our entire list of points. So this is point one. It's at index I. We're asking, is this the point that lies on the longest line? To determine that, we need a hash map, which is kind of what I was alluding to earlier, which I'm going to, in Python, use collections.default dict and then pass an int into it because that will, by default, if we like go like this now, count of four, and then we increment it by one, this will set count of four equal to one because what the default dict does is it if you use a key that hasn't already been inserted into the hash map it will by default give it a value of zero so then adding one to zero sets it equal to one which is kind of what we would expect then i'm going to iterate through every other point so i'm going to take i plus one and uh every other point basically after i p2 is going to be the point at index j and I'm going to have a conditional because we want to know if the two points lie on the same X point. So if P2 of zero is equal to P1 of zero, that means they lie on the same X value. So we're just gonna say the slope is equal to infinity. Uh, otherwise, we actually have to calculate the slope. Not too bad, Y2, which is the P2 point at index one minus P1 at index one, this divided by the difference of the x values, so p2 of zero minus p1 of zero. And then we're going to set our count using the slope value that we calculated and incrementing it by one. Basically, we found another point that lies on this line with this slope. Now, this is kind of slightly different than what I showed in the drawing explanation, because if we found a pair of points on the same line now with the same slope, initially, this is just gonna be set to one. Well, that's okay, because now when we actually update the result, we're gonna say the result is equal to the maximum of what it currently is, or it's going to be the count of the current slope value that we just calculated plus one. The reason I'm doing the plus one is we pretty much have to because we're counting the number of total points, whereas here we're getting like one less than that. And believe it or not, that pretty much is it. So let's go ahead and return the result and quickly run this to make sure that it works. And of course, we made a simple mistake. We're not going to be iterating through N. Our uh, input is actually points. I don't know how I messed that up, but now let's run it and make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it is pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to see code solutions for languages other than Python, check out neatcode.io. It's got a ton of free resources that'll help you prepare for coding interviews. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.